Hello. So today we are making bird feeders with 32 ounce ball mason jars. And for the connecting part, we are using um, their poultry feeders. Poultry feeders and poultry waterers. Also, you can make with this red base, you can make a bird waterer. So you can make it hanging or sitting where just the water comes to the bottom. Or you can do it as I have done. Instead of just leaving this one hole that's in it for water, I've taken my soldering iron and I've melted two more holes in the side to make it a bird feeder. This is the other base. It's a good bird feeder for um, giant seeds like sunflower seeds, etc. Or it would also make a good squirrel feeder. You could set it on some kind of a base, connect it to your tree. Of course, we all know the squirrels are mighty. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're mighty ingenious in their ways of getting to the seeds. So. You could just hang it and watch the fun as they swing from the feeder. Now I'm making these for Christmas gifts for some of my children. So I'm making a variety so that they have a choice. But I also wanted to show you some different ways to do it. And here's Jeffrey's little paws. He's got to always get in the picture. Because, as I always say, it is Jeffrey's world. I'm just in it. Now, I bought this chain. Okay, so far, the jars are about a dollar a piece if you buy them by the 12-pack. By the, the silver base was $4.99. The red base was $2.99. I got them at my local hardware store. Um, I live in the country, so you can get them at feed stores and hardware stores here. But I believe Tractor Supply has them as well. And then the chain I bought at the hardware store, and it was 99 cents a foot. So if you use a couple feet for the hanger, it's going to be a couple dollars per feeder. And then I've also went to my local thrift store and got a variety of just random pan lids. And I paid anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar. This one's rather antique looking. I thought it would make it really cute for the farmhouse look. And then I've also used some tattoos. I got a whole set of them, about 30 of them, for a dollar at the dollar store. So you can see on average... These feeders come out to about $10 a piece. And you can make them simple. There are different kinds of lids. I like the lid to extend beyond the base to keep the rain out. But also they'll be good for squirrel deterrent if you didn't glue them uh, to the feeder but hang it a little further above. However, all of mine I've glued to the feeder because I think it makes it look cute. Okay, Jeffrey, enough. Enough of you, Jeffrey. So really, it's pretty simple. If you just want to make a basic one like this and put a chain on it, this one has a screw inside, so you could take that knob off and put a different knob. This one is not a screw, so you're kind of stuck with that knob. You could decorate that knob. You could paint it or put some beads on it. And this one has kind of a chunky knob that I thought was cute. That makes a really cute feeder.
And it's also kind of cute on this one. I thought about putting a lid on this one and then decorating the jar so they're all not plain. I'm kind of an artsy fartsy person. I like color. I like pops of color. Now and then I like something just plain, but generally where I see a blank canvas, I feel the need to decorate. So you just put it on like that, and then with E6000 glue, which holds really great, you can glue the lid to it. This one has no screw on the inside, so you're kind of stuck with that chain as well. I mean, that um, top, the handle. Let's see, they're a little bit scratched up and stuff because they're used, but I think it also goes with the farmhouse look that's quite popular right now. I like this really chunky lid. No screw inside. See, they all give a little different effect. So you could make 10 of them for 10 kids if you had 10 kids. And they'd all get a little different. None would be the same. I'm going to pass them out to who I think they match with and let them trade amongst themselves if they'd rather. Now this bottom base is... Um, oh, I wanted to mention that they screw on easily. They, they fit perfectly on the regular mouth ball mason jars or the Kerr mason jar. They screw right into it. Perfect. But that, um, the silver one, I can see where it could kind of be a mess. So I was wondering about maybe putting some mesh over some of the holes. Okay, I'm going to take a break, wash these lids up, and I'll be right back. Here we go. Got them all clean, got the stickers off. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to put the chain on. I've got some little wood screws. Well, I'm, they're not wood screws, they're metal screws. So they're not the pointed. They're the flat end for metal. And even though the tops are not metal, I've already tested it out on one of the lids and it works perfect. The hardest part is drilling the hole in the handle. You've got to really put some backbone behind it and it takes a good minute. The starting, it's kind of hard, but once you finally break through this little barrier then it goes pretty quick and I didn't feel the need to glue the screw in you could if it made you feel better maybe if you use too big of a drill bit but get a drill bit that matches the size of your screw and I've sped it up a little bit so you didn't have to sit through all of this drilling but uh, it takes a good minute a good couple minutes. But anyway, when you screw your screw in, if it feels like it's not really nice and snug, you might want to back the screw out, put a little super glue in the hole, and then put your screw back in because you do not want the chain to break. I mean, the chain to come loose and then the feeder will fall because the glass will break. Of course, you could just buy another another jar but then you have to glue the lid back on yada yada so and at the end of the video I'm going to show some pictures of completed of four or five that I've completed and they don't all have their chains on them yet the one the one that was really old timey looking with the uh, that didn't have a screw on the inside. I decided to screw to drill four holes through the uh, pot lid 
and I'm going to put a chain out of each of the four holes. So it's going to have four smaller pieces and then I'm going to put a big hook on the end so it can hang easily on a tree branch. But this is how it looks with the chain. And I made the chain nice and long in case they have a, a high up branch or whatever. Because they can always make it shorter. They can take out some chain links if they need to. And all I'm doing is putting a thick bead of this E6000 all the way around on the rim. Now this lid is not flat and neither is the jar. The jar sinks in a little bit and the lid sinks in. So really it, it wouldn't do any good to put glue in the middle. Just around the edge. And then some of them that I didn't feel like they got a good contact. After I let them dry, I went back around the edge of the jar with another bead of the E6000 after it's already dried and ready to go. I really don't want them to fall apart from the weight of the seed. But like I said, E6000 is really pretty good. It's pretty strong stuff. See how it's concave? And I'm just eyeballing it on this one right here for the video. But I actually took a tape measure and measured all the way around. I spun it around in a circle and made sure that it was the same distance all the way around. Because you don't want it to get dry and you're so proud of your work. And then you turn it over and stand it up and it's crooked. Now this jar, I spray painted it gray. It was supposed to be a silver. And I didn't really like the color of it the way it came out. But then I decided to add some pops of red. So this one ended up turning out to be one of my favorites after all was said and done. Again, I'm speeding it up because it was... Quite a long process with this tiny brush painting. I just tried to paint the raised, uh, the raised pieces, just to give it some dimension and depth. And it's a far cry from the plain silver that I started out with. So I'm just going around the. The raised up items, and really it doesn't matter on the back here. I, I paid more attention on the front where the letters were, but back here it's kind of, if your lines are messed up, nobody's really going to notice. Sometimes we're too hard on ourselves when we do crafts. Especially if it's a gift for someone that's not a crafter, they don't look at it as closely as we do. I'm sure you can see some of my boo-boos. So there you have it. Um, I painted the, the top on this um, lid. A bright funky red to go with it. Put my little chain on. And a la-dee-da, there we go. Turned out to be one of my favorites. And this is the little red base that you can see I've added extra holes. Because I'm making them all to be bird feeders, not waterers. So I just took my soldering iron and melted holes, extra holes, and cut them out in a square kind of to match the ones that was there. I didn't do a perfect job, but... It's another one, one of those things probably no one will look or notice. So that one's complete. One Christmas gift down. 900 to go. Now here's another lid that I painted the top red. And you can see I didn't do a very good job on the red. 
but I wasn't concentrating on that because I knew I would be covering it with beads. This was another arduous task, so I sped it up to save you the grief. But it's something I like to do, uh, these kind of crafts when I'm watching TV. I settle down for a movie or what have you, and I get out my crafts and I work. It relaxes me. So it didn't bother me that it took a long time. And I'm not sure who I'm going to give this one to because it's kind of wild, kind of out there. I'm not sure any of my kids are of this type. But I do have a new daughter-in-law that I think she might be. She's a crafter. She might appreciate it. So I just filled it in uh, quite a bit around with these beads. I put a few little flowers around the centers. Covering a good bit on the handle and then the whole thing gets sealed triple sealed with clear glaze I like to seal everything if you just put these beads on they feel like they stick really well but you know this is going to be in the sun in the rain going to be in the elements so everything I like to seal and the triple the triple clear sealer I think it's Krylon that I use. It is good. You can dishwash them, you know, in the sink. I haven't tried them in the dishwasher, but there's that one completed, and I put some tattoos on it. Here are these completed. And one I didn't show with the knots. I just knotted rope. That one still needs a chain. This one as well. And that's it. Please like and subscribe.